Hi, uh, we decided to launch a new series and we will be doing a training according to A320 Full Flight Simulator type rating program. Uh, we'll be starting from the basics and uh, go through all the steps that pilots learn and all the procedures and all the failures uh, that the pilots learn to get their type rating. Uh, this is not for training purposes, just for you people to watch and, and for fun to see how it should be done and how it could be done in, uh, when you're learning for the type rating or playing at home. Uh, the first lesson will be just the start, uh, pre-flight procedures, cockpit preparation, uh, taxi, before takeoff procedures. Uh, after that, we'll uh, get into more detail and uh, some failures on engine start and so on, takeoff, climb, step by step, and then it will get uh, gradually more and more difficult. Uh, we'll have 12 lessons in all. This is the same amount that all the pilots have when they're studying their type rate. Uh, so we start with the first lesson, keep watching. Uh, so the first thing the co-pilot or pilot on flying for the flight does in the cockpit uh, is uh, test various levers so nothing would move when the power will be on. So the first thing is first, uh, engine master switches. Check, off. All right, uh, mode selector. Mode selector, normal. Normal. Uh, landing gear lever. Landing gear lever, down. Down. And then wipers. Wipers. Off, off, and off on this side as well. Good. And then we check the electrical part. Electrical part is the battery system over here. Uh, we check the voltage. It should be more than 25.5 volts so on each battery. Battery 1, 28.1. Battery 2, 28.3. All right, so that's more than enough. If it would be lower than 25.5, uh, then we will have to sh charge the batteries, which takes around 20 minutes. Uh, so the voltage is good, we can turn on the batteries. Battery 1, auto. Battery 2, auto. Okay, and the cockpit comes to life uh, on emergency power, essentially. So the only light available is the dome light, which is always on, even if there is no electrical power. Um, after that, we can connect the external power. We have the light available, we check again. Available, external and power on. Yeah. on. Okay, so we have everything lit up. Uh, the monitors are warming up. Uh, we can turn on the displays. And this will be enough for now. Okay, so after the electrical part, uh, the first thing is to start the APU. Uh, before starting the APU, uh, we check the fire warning. So we have it over here, yeah? We press test, hold it, and check for fire warning, discharge, and also we have fire warning here, and the signal. So it's good, uh, we can start the APU. So we turn on the APU master switch. And just a moment, we'll go, yeah, we have the APU uh, shown here and we'll click start. We can see on the monitor, we have flap open and then the APU is starting. Okay, we have the available written here and here and also here, so APU is starting and available. Um, we can also check the electrical page and see that we have external power and we have APU. Uh, we'll stay for, uh, on external power as long as possible, uh, just to save up the APU and, and save up the maintenance costs. Uh, but we can turn on the APU bleed, uh, so APU bleed is here. Uh, we can pump air into the cabin. Turn it on. And then in the bleed page, we see that APU is connected into the system and we have a hot air, 100 degrees, 105 degrees, and 10 from the APU pumping. This is the duct temperature pumping into the cabin. And on the conditioning page, we can see the cockpit and cabin forward and aft is now 14 degrees. 
and the hot air from the EPU is pumping in all the three cabins and is now at 52 degrees and the uh, uh, temperature is rising rapidly in the aircraft for the passengers. After EPU bleed is started, we turn on the cockpit lights. Uh, so we have a couple of switches here. Uh, flood light here and overhead cable light here. Uh, we can also turn on all the monitors. So navigation display, primary flight display. Yep, everything is on. Uh, then we check the flaps. Uh, we check that the flap level would correspond to what is showing on the ECAM. So we have zero and zero is shown on the ECAM. We don't do anything if, it's, if it would be shown one and there one we wouldn't set it to zero uh, without advising the ground crew. Uh, we make sure that nothing in the, on the plane, no, none of the plane surfaces move in any way. Uh, just check. So flaps is zero and zero. Yes. Uh, then the parking brake. Uh, we check that the parking brake should be on. on. Yeah. Parking brake is on. We check the, the pressure and if the brakes are on. Uh, in this case, we see that is zero, and accumulation pressure is zero, zero, and brakes are zero. Brakes are not on. Uh, that means that the brakes discharged overnight and we need to charge it and we do that with the electrical hydraulic pump the hydraulic view and we turn on the electrical hydraulic pump on the overhead go ahead okay and we can see the connection from yellow to green and here we can see the pressure is coming back should be in the green zone, is in the green zone, brakes are on, we can turn off the pump. So we can turn it off again, press it harder, and yeah, good. And we check the hydraulics panel, pump is off, and there is no connection, so we're good. We can continue further on. And uh, we continue with the probe heat. Uh, we check that the probe heat is in auto, so it's not on, so that means that it is auto, yeah? yeah. Uh, then air conditioning panel, uh, we check that the cross bleed would be auto, so this switch, yeah? Uh, pack flow, low, normal or high. Uh, when the EPU is on, it is automatically put in high. Uh, when the engines are on, it could be normal or low. Low is used if there are less than 115 passengers aboard, something like that. And normal in all other operations, high if there is exceptionally uh, warm, uh, hot or, or humid air uh, in the plane. So no white lights, so it's good. Uh, then we check the electrical panel. Uh, there should be no white lights except the uh, amber lights on generators. Uh, after the air conditioning and electrical panels, uh, we go back to the ECAM, uh, press recall for three seconds, see that it's written normal. Uh, if there would be any messages left uh, on the previous flight, uh, any errors, uh, some, something wrong with the equipment, it would show. So we know that everything was good on the previous flight as well. Um, then we check the oxygen pressure, hydraulic quantity and engine oil quantity on the ECAM. So oxygen uh, pressure is on the door page. You can see it here, 1850, 1850 PSI, that's good. Uh, then we go to hydraulic, check that these three arrows are in the green area. Uh, then we go to engine and check that the oil quantity uh, is also enough. So we have maximum 20, so that's good. After that, we check that the emergency equipment is on board. Uh, we check the landing gear pins and covers are on board. Uh, we check the repellent and uh, circuit breakers, if everything is in and looks okay. And after that, there's the external walk around. Uh, so we'll skip that and go directly to pilot flying 
uh, procedures for COVID preparation.